First at four, busted for high-end burglaries. Michigan's attorney general talks about a victory against thieves getting away with millions in stolen goods. Targeting former President Donald Trump, a new move by the special counsel reaches back to a precedent set during Watergate. We'll explain that. Kim? Well, it's a chilly start to the work week, and we have lots of clouds, but that's all about to change as sunshine and warmer weather return to Metro Detroit. We'll talk about it coming up. It's the holidays. Got stress? There are over 34,000 emotions a human can experience. Most people can only name four to six. Get app. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at 4 starts now. Good afternoon to you and thanks so much for joining me. I'm Christy McDonald in for Karen Drew today. First at four, the state of Michigan just took a bite out of organized crime with arrests in two crime ring operations. Attorney General Dana Nessel just announced six arrests late this afternoon. Three Chilean nationals are in custody facing charges with burglaries at high-end homes in several towns, including Bloomfield Township, Rochester Hills, and Gross Point Farms. Nessel says the stolen goods added up to items worth millions and millions of dollars. We have been talking about thieves like this dressed in black, jamming alarm systems, and wearing gloves to avoid leaving evidence. Nessel says this investigation is not over. We are proud to have made these arrests in connection to these home invasions, but these three are not responsible for every break-in that fits this very clear pattern. There are more out there, and we will continue our efforts to find them and to bring them to justice. Nessel also announced three arrests in an organized retail theft ring where thieves go into stores, grab a bunch of expensive merchandise, and run away. They targeted Lululemon and Ulta stores around the state. More on all of the arrests tonight at 6 o'clock. All right, this breaking news involves traffic trouble during the evening drive. Sky 4 was just over westbound I-94 at Ecourse Road. You can see there's some kind of accident there. Right now, we don't have info on injuries or what went wrong, but the westbound lanes of 94 are closed at Ecourse Road, so avoid the area if you can until it is cleaned up. Meantime, Detroit police remain tight-lipped about the new person of interest in custody in the murder of a prominent Jewish leader. Samantha Wool was found stabbed to death outside of her Lafayette Park home in Detroit back in October. Police have said that they don't believe it was a hate crime, but they haven't explained what the motive might have been. Wool was the leader of a Detroit synagogue and active in Michigan politics. Another person of interest was taken into custody back in November, but he was released without being charged. Well, so far, no charges against the parents of a five-year-old boy who shot and killed himself while jumping on the bed. Investigators say mom and dad were not home when the child found the gun on a dresser, was playing with the weapon, and shot himself in the face. Four other children were in the apartment at the time. CPS was called to care for those kids. The investigation is ongoing. The incoming president of Michigan State University says he wants to learn more about the school that he will soon be leading, and we're learning more about him. Today, reporters asked Kevin Guskowitz about his take on demands for greater transparency at MSU, and here's part of his answer. Uh, at times, people will link um, a quote-unquote lack of transparency with perhaps uh, being uh, dishonest, and those two things are are. are very different and separate, and I will guarantee you and promise you that uh, we will um, work uh, with the community in, in, uh, with the highest level of integrity honest and honesty uh, with a, hopefully an appreciation and understanding that we can't always be as transparent uh, until a certain point, uh, especially around personnel matters, but, but uh, I believe in transparency. Guskowitz takes over on March 4th, and he promises a listening tour that first week to start meeting people and hearing their concerns. All right, well, if you're checking your calendar, Christmas is two weeks from today. Here's a live look at the tree, Campus Marshes, a couple skaters out there. After a blast of warmer weather this weekend, we are back in the 30s heading towards the holiday. Forewarned meteorologist Kim Adams standing by with the first forecast. Hi, Kim. Hi, I don't know why that just hit me like two weeks from I know. today. It was like, <laughs> oh, what happened? 34 right now out at Metro Airport. It's a chilly start to the work week. 36 City Airport, 32 in Pontiac. Factor in the wind, it feels more like it's in the 20s. Low 20s in Pontiac, 27 in Mount Clare. 
Clemens current wind chill in Monroe is 26, 28 in Grosseal, and it is uh, 24. That's the current wind chill now in Ann Arbor and in Howell. Tomorrow, well, we get into the low 40s. We'll have a little more sunshine tomorrow than what we had today. But what you'll notice tomorrow, the winds will be gusting close to 30 miles per hour out of the west. Then we have a quick cool down for Wednesday down into the 30s below normal and we go right back up above normal for the rest of the week and into the weekend. We'll talk about a return of some sunshine coming up. Sounds good. We'll see you in a bit. Thanks, Kim. Can former President Donald Trump be prosecuted for crimes he may have committed while in office? Special Counsel Jack Smith is asking the United States Supreme Court to take up that question as quickly as possible. Kimberly Gill is in the newsroom, and Kim, the special counsel, really trying to speed things up with this new request, isn't he? Yeah, he is. Uh, Christine, good afternoon to you. The special counsel has accused the former president of using dishonesty, fraud, and deceit, trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election won by Joe Biden. Mr. Trump has argued he's immune from prosecution. A federal judge recently ruled the case can indeed go forward. In a December 1st ruling, the judge wrote that the office of the president does not confer a, quote, lifelong get out of jail free pass. But the former president has indicated he will appeal her ruling and hope to delay the trial, which is currently set for March 4th of next year. Today, the special counsel argued the case presents a fundamental question at the heart of our democracy. Prosecutors also wrote Trump's trial should proceed as quickly as possible if his immunity claim is rejected. The former president has denied any wrongdoing in the case. So Smith is trying to circumvent the appeals process that would normally take place. Place. There's a precedent of such an outcome. The 1974 case, U.S. versus Nixon, urged the court to force Richard Nixon to hand over the Watergate tapes. The court agreed, and Nixon resigned soon after that ruling. The earliest the Supreme Court could take up the issue would be January 5th. So, former President Trump faces a handful of trials in the future the classified documents case, election tampering in Georgia, and a hush money case in New York. On top of all those trials, he is running for president in the 2024 election. So, Christy, there's a lot to cover here. We will, of course, keep you posted on all of it. Absolutely. All right. Thanks so much, Kim. Sure. And that New York fraud trial surrounding Trump will resume tomorrow. Over the weekend, the former president decided against testifying for the defense. Trump was already called to the stand by prosecutors last month and offered combative testimony, citing, quote, a very hostile judge. Trump says he has nothing else to offer now. New York's attorney general is expected to have two rebuttal witnesses after the defense rests. Closing arguments are set for January 11th. Well, a pregnant Texas woman fighting to get an abortion has left the state to get the procedure someplace else. Late Friday, the Texas Supreme Court stopped Kate Cox from getting the abortion that her doctor said was medically necessary. The stay came hours after a lower court said she could. Cox is a mother of two who wants a third child, but found out the fetus she's carrying has a condition likely leading to a stillbirth or a death soon after birth. Her attorneys say Cox has been to the ER four times, and she wasn't willing to wait for the courts to decide. They did not disclose where she headed. Well, back here at home, it is a time of year when our emotions can run wild, from holiday happiness to shopping stress to seasonal loneliness. Our Paula Tutman found about a new app that can serve as something of a personal mental health coach, which sounds really interesting, Paula. Yeah, I think so, especially when you look at this tree behind me. It's so pretty, but that doesn't necessarily equate for a happy state of mind for absolutely everybody. So the woman who actually designed this app is local. But here's the thing, once you download it, you can stick it in your pocket or put it in your purse, and it's like you've got your own mental health expert right there with you every step of the way. When it comes to chops, professional executive coach Kathy Motts got them. I'm a certified social and emotional intelligence coach. I have trained over 10,000 people nationally and internationally. I'm a master certified coach through the International Coaching Federation. Got stress? Kathy Mott gets it. There are over 34,000 emotions a human can experience. Most people can only name four to six. And we experience over 400 emotions during the day. With more than a decade as a science-based practitioner, Kathy, the president and CEO of CWC Leadership Development, developed an app to put her voice in your ear. The app, My Journey Within. The goal of this app is to help you enhance your emotional intelligence and increase your emotional vocabulary. Actually takes you inside yourself. What am I feeling today? 
fear. And in the process, increases emotional intelligence, emotional awareness, and gives options on how to manage whatever you're feeling at that time. Sometimes I allow people into my space that shouldn't be there and they say negative things to make me feel less than I am. To help anyone from anywhere dial into their emotions for real-time tutorials on how to navigate feelings, stressors, upsets, and even difficult conversations. Think about those individuals who haven't maybe seen family members for a year, and now they're gonna be sitting at the table with them. They have an opportunity to work through emotions. Let's say I feel insecure or I feel inadequate with my family members. By following the prompts, the user can make a plan to manage conflict, whether it's with yourself or anyone else. What do I wanna do with this emotion? Now we have options. Breathe deeply, allow myself to experience this emotion. So that's a push pause. Mm -hmm. So they have choices. Just in time for the holidays, but not just for the holidays. I specialize in introducing people to themselves, helping them fall in love with themselves, discover their natural gifts and talents, and lead from a place of confidence. Yeah, how about that calm voice? Hoosa. So the app is subscription based. It's just under $50 for the entire year. You can find it on any of your devices at your content store, but we don't want you to be even more stressed looking for it. So of course, Christy, we're going to put an easy link to find it on our social media platforms as well as click on Detroit.com. That's perfect. And you said it, Paula. I was saying her voice. I could listen to her all day. It already calmed me down. <laughs> That's right. And it's so accessible. Thanks so Smooth much. Going. That's right. <laughs> Find it on clickondetroit.com. Find your moments of zen there.